Hi there and welcome to this map styling tutorial. In this screencast we're gonna learn how to style maps in GeoLayers. We're gonna change colors, we're gonna swap the font of the labels, we're gonna hide certain groups of features, and we're gonna have a look at how to link map comps. Okay, let's jump into this. We're gonna create a map comp of Zurich here. And to get started with some fresh colors, I'm gonna use an Adobe Swatch file here. You can simply drag it on top of um, uh, the GeoLayers panel and it's gonna use the colors from the Swatch file to style our map. Now what I don't like is that the, the colors of the parks here is this red and the roads have sort of a greenish color. So I'm gonna copy the hex code here, use the greenish color for my parks and I'm gonna paste the hex code for the road color and like this it like sort of looks more natural to me. I'm good with that so I'm gonna hit create. There we go. Um, I actually don't like the view really I want it to be a bit more zoomed in and I'm changing the pitch and the bearing by right clicking and dragging the map. To edit the styles of map comps, you're gonna open up the map comp list here and then you have this settings icon. Now you get a bunch of options here. First you can of course um, change the imagery so we could use like Bing satellite here. But we don't want that. I'm good with this basic style from our swatch colors. But if we scroll a bit further down, you can see this section, which is all about the map comp labels, which is those labels here. And you have some, some suggestions that GeoLayers um, creates based on the colors of your, of your map. But as you want to really detail change them, you can always click the one that is already selected again, or click this Edit Labels button over here. And as you do so, GeoLays is going to open up your map comp and solo only the map comp template layers. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color to this pink over here. All right, cool. What we can also do, we can select all of those labels and change the font. So I'm going to change the font to cheap pine here, which I really like. Each layer represents a different group of features and can be styled individually. You can also an or disable certain groups of features and you can block individual features. What I now don't like that those labels are yeah, a bit small globally, so we have this global size setting here. So you can just drag it around and I'm gonna change it to 1.5 I think. That looks pretty good to me. Now let's hit apply. And as I click finalize here, we're gonna see how our map is gonna look like if the imagery is rendered for this zoom. There we go. I'd actually like to tweak this a bit more. So I'm gonna go back to my map comp settings. And I would, I would love to adjust the imagery a bit. So I click the already selected imagery thumbnail here. And now we have a bunch of more options here. So we can, for example, adjust the line width. And I'm gonna change this to twice the size. And I don't want this red color to pop out as much as the labels. So you want to make this color a bit more subtle here. So yeah, I would simply use one of the suggestions GLAS does here. So let's hit apply and start animating our map. So what I want to do is I want to create a zoom out from Zurich to sort of like an overview of Europe. Therefore, I will first unlink my map come from my UI view. And this will enable me to simply drag this map around and the map come view is not going to change. You can see a visualization of the map come view on our preview map here. So I'm zooming out even more. There we go. 
And what we can do is we can reset the rotation. And as I click this, the bearing and the pitch is gonna be set to zero. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more, probably like this. And as I have my final view, I can click set map com view here. And GLS is gonna set the map com view and is gonna, of course, add keyframes to our animation properties here. That's a little preview of my animation here. And I'm gonna finalize this animation. Okay, let's preview this map animation here. And I really like it to be very detailed when we're looking at Zurich, but I don't want to have like all those roads when we're in this um, Europe overview. So we're gonna do something about this. At first, we're going to split our map comp labels from the imagery. Therefore, we're going to the map comp list, hit duplicate, and we have some duplicate modes here. And the third one is split imagery and labels. And this is exactly what we want. I'm going to simply call this one labels here, and I'm going to hit split. And what GeoLayers is doing now, it is creating basically two map comes, one that has only the labels, you can see it here, and one that has only the imagery, you can see it here. Um, the map comp list now is sorted alphabetically, but we might want to, it, you know, it's a bit confusing that this one comes first here, but it is below the labels over here. So we can change the sort order here. Sort by layer order in containing comp. This is pretty much exactly what we want. We do now have the imagery map comp below the label map comp over here. And the labels are linked, you can see this right here, to our basic imagery map comp. That means the view animation is automatically going to follow, even though there are no keyframes on our animation properties here. Next step, we're gonna split our imagery again because we basically wanna have two styles. We wanna have one style for the zoomed in part and we wanna have one style for the overview. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna duplicate the imagery map comp. Now we're gonna use the second mode. We're gonna simply duplicate this map comp inside of this containing comp here. You could also duplicate the containing comp with all its containing map comps, um, but we don't need this now. And a cool option here is that we can automatically link the duplicated map comp to its source map comp, which is this one. This will basically do the same thing as we did with the labels. I'm going to change my layer order here. And to refresh the sorting here, I can simply toggle the sort mode here. Sort by link views is also pretty cool because it lets you exactly know which map comp is linked to which one. So both of those map comps are linked to that one. But we're going to the layer order sorting again. And I'm going to open the map comp settings again. First, I would like to rename this to overview. And we're gonna do some styling again. So I'm gonna click that one. What we can do here is simply enable or disable certain features. So I don't want roads here. I don't want buildings, of course. I don't want rail. I don't want parks. And my borders should only appear on land. You can see this right here. Both borders are there. Land, the borders are gone. Okay, let's hit apply and see how that looks. If you want to see a map in the finalized quality, but don't want to finalize the whole animation, you can simply hold down control or command and click finalize. This will only finalize one frame of your animation. Now, this actually looks pretty good. All we need to do now is creating a transition between this layer and this layer. We're gonna simply do this with the opacity property. So I'm gonna keyframe the opacity here. Go a few frames ahead, set this to zero. 
and trim my layers here. Once I did that, I'm going to finalize my whole animation and see what it looks like. Nice and smooth. With this technique, you can also easily create a transition from satellite map imagery to a graphical political map. Now, there's some stuff I don't like about those labels. So I'm going to go to my label map come settings here. And I want to increase the density. And I can also change the language. I'm going to change that one to German. With those settings, I'm going to hit apply. I could click the finalize button here, but this will always finalize all related map comes. And since both of them are linked to this one, it will always finalize all of these. Since they are already finalized, I can simply click that button here to finalize only a single map comp. Like this, we have more labels in a different language, and all of them are being blended in and out according to their importance. To make this map look more interesting, we're going to do a bunch of things. Uh, first, we're going to pre-compose this one and call this render. And we're going to do some effects here. First, I'd like to have some like stop motion look. So I'm going to decrease the frame rate to 12.5 frames here. Then I'm going to import this crumbled paper texture here and put this on top. Set the blending mode to multiply and I'm going to decrease the opacity a bit like that. Yes, I like this way. And I want to have some motion blur. To do this on our map animation, we can use the pixel motion blur here. I would also like to make them labels pop out even more. So I'm going back to my containing map comp here. As our labels are simply in a um, separated map comp, we can use a drop shadow effect on them. I'm going to increase the softness a bit here. And I really like it that way. All right, that's it. We're done with our map animation and if you have questions because I didn't explain like every detail of all the settings here, please refer to our help. You can find a detailed description of each setting in GLIS 3 in there.